but uh, I found some of them that the ink is really black and it's really pure and it's um it's consistent so I try using those but when I erase I still lose some of the ink and when I color it um, I it's 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 not a, it's not the pure black and white that I want and even when I adjust it digitally I still don't get quite what I need and you know how you're your own biggest critic so um, I asked Tom uh, about the process I told him I can't wait till the convention I want to learn from you and um, you know I I there's nothing like using that nib and there's and t what Tom said is it's just a tool I've seen people use a brush pen far better than I can use a pen and nib or a dip pen or an ink pen and um, I was surprised because I didn't expect him to say that but what he wh what he says applies to this there's a lot of I used to say that I didn't ever want to drop the pencil I love sketching and before an illustration I would always want to draw in pencil whether I was doing it digitally or traditionally or painting I just want that sketch feel to it and I want it to be pure but this is not any less pure what this is is it's the same result by different means and if you can master the technique or at least come close to to getting a control on the technique then you're in a pretty good place so um i see this now as just another means to the same end um i know that i want a certain cartoony style so there's no need to really sketch it i want to use all digital i might add a texture to it afterwards so there's no need to have the paper texture i can always add that and this saves me a little bit of time so i i'm i'm starting to appreciate um diverse styles, diverse techniques, and accept when people work in all digital or when they when they don't draw because I know that there's a time and a place for it and there's no reason to criticize it. So right now I'm just sketching in his beard. Um, you can see that the, the face area is starting to come together. I think there's a pretty good likes to Bill Murray. I might want his beard to get a little bigger with his beard. I like how his beard juts out in the bottom so I'm just gonna block that in. I can always, the great thing is I can always paint over this so I like sort of sketching it in like this there we go I like that he doesn't have a big chin but his beard has this nice little explosion right around this area right here let me see if I can yeah right around here and I like that quite a bit so I'm using that um, I'm going to uh, just add some white Now I'm not gonna finish this to its full potential or extent right now I'm going to uh, just finish up enough so that I get an idea of where I'm going and I probably about as finished as Ben Stiller is but I'm going to try to just get it to a stage where I'm comfortable so I can move on to the next character because that helps keep me motivated when I'm working in stages you know how if you look at one thing for too long you can get really get bored you need to take a break um, I had some great painting teachers my second year at Cleveland Institute of Art and they uh, they always told me I would take breaks quite a bit and I always felt like I was a procrastinator I still am but uh, they would tell me that there's nothing wrong with that and I was kinda surprised to hear them say that because I thought they were gonna you know get mad at me but they said no if you you're, you're better off doing that because if you sit there and stare at your painting you'll never know what it really looks like the longer you look at it the more it just becomes what you're imagining it to be I guess you could say um, or you you don't have a fresh eye everyone needs a fresh eye a fresh perspective that's why critiques are great you can get into a piece for so long and until you have someone walk up to you and say oh I think this um, when they've just seen the per piece for the first time, a lot of times you don't really get an, a feel for uh, what you need to do to work on a piece. And if you're trying to improve as an artist, which I don't understand why you wouldn't, um, unless it's just a job, which I don't know why anyone would choose just art for just a job, because uh, you can be a stockbroker, you can sell homes, you can get into real estate, you can, uh, you can go work um, in finances, you can be an accountant. There's a lot of ways to make money. So just being an artist just for the money is a silly answer I never believe it and if anyone does I don't understand that um, but uh, now I completely lost track of what I was doing and I'm sure when I listen to this record or what I was saying and if I listen to the recording I'll uh, I'll remember it and feel like a fool but um, anyway I'm going to oh yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna get to a stage where I'm comfortable with it and I get bored once I get bored I'm gonna move on so that I can come back to it later with a fresh eye so I'm just sort of blocking it in. I like the way this is looking compared to the Ben Stiller, but I'll smooth it out so they're a consistent um, form a little bit later. So right now I'm going to get a little bit darker with this gray, maybe a little warmer. Bring his beard out. Work that shadow a little bit. Work it, work it. 
So um, speaking of St. Louis, I mean not St. Yes, St. Louis. I was just at a small convention that was put on by a few NCN members, um, and in Kansas City, and that was a wonderful event. It was really fun, and then there's one coming up in St. Louis. It's going to be put on by a few other NCN members, and this is an NCN sanctioned event. If you don't know about the NCN, it's the National Caricaturist Network, and I learned and gained so much from that organization. For all um, uh, for all it's worth, if you go in trying to learn, trying to get something, trying to meet people, you will really get a lot out of it. It's a fairly intimate group, and that's what I like about it. Um, but there are some big-name people. You know, Steve Silver has been involved for years. Tom Richardson has been involved for years, and that's just, just two people. I mean, there's guest speakers every year. We've had Sebastian Kruger, the painter, as our guest speaker. We've had Jan Optebeek, who comes back almost every year. It's quite amazing. Um, David O'Keefe, the sculptor and illustrator, he has come back after being our uh, keynote speaker. Daniel Adele was our keynote speaker last year, just an, an amazing gentleman, Steve Brodner. So these are some of the people you can meet and get s sort of one-on-one -on -one time with, and it's... um. It's fascinating. So if you want to look into it, there's going to be a great uh, convention this year in Raleigh, North Carolina, from November 2nd to the 7th, I believe. And um, it's it's just pennies compared to what it's worth. You know, I think it costs $125 to go to the convention. You have to pay your airfare and your hotel. They get great roommates, room rates, and uh, you get to hang up your art on the wall and compete and take workshops and seminars. It's just It's just excellent. So... If you haven't checked that out, I recommend, you know, giving it a shot or at least reading up. Go to caricature.org and see what you think. There's an online forum. There's magazines. It's very cool. So, um, Phil Murray's coming along pretty good. I'm going to uh, paint his ear in now. I haven't really gotten to the highlights. You can see I started a little lighter than I wanted to, so I played with them there. Um, the light source, when I choose my reference for group shots like these, light source is so important in an illustration because you need it to look like, if you want them to be in the same place, it's easy if you're simplifying and you're just creating really simple cartoons. But if I'm rendering to any degree like you see me doing here, you really have to have consistent light source because if you don't, it's not believable.